was going to do quite a tidy video of write down my notes and things, my feelings from this census that was released yesterday. And um, I just thought I'd, I'll just put a camera in front of my face instead and just talk, really. Um, it's hard. It's down hard. I mean, there's a lot to be proud of. Um, I think when you're asking a question that says, do you speak Welsh? There's going to be a lot of people out there who have amazing skills, but you know, if you're asked a question once every 10 years, the only official question you're asked about your ability to speak a language once every 10 years, it's official governmental documentation, you know, and you're thinking, oh, can I speak Welsh that well? I went to Welsh medium school or my Welsh is really good. And, but you still say no. And there's so many who have fallen through that net. Um, there are around 15,000 people learning Welsh via courses. There are nearly 11,000 maniacs following me on Twitter on the Dr. Kamraig account. Not all those do courses. You know, the question wasn't asked about people living in England uh, and other places around the world, uh, of which there are hundreds of thousands, or over 100,000, I should say, people who speak the language there. So... I think when you you know when you take out the fact that some people um, who can speak the language but may have felt a little bit nervous to put fluent, you know, there's a lot of people in that bracket. There's a lot of people who are incredible learners who would still rather be conservative with a small C and say, I'm not fluent, so I can't put that down. Um there's a lot of that. If anything, I'd put my neck on the line and say the you know the twenty thousand or so speakers that we've lost. Um, I think I think that's wrong. I actually think the Welsh language has grown, but you know that's open to interpretation. But people only want headlines. And the headline is that we're down to seventeen point something percent. Um, those are people who are brave enough to say they're fluent. That's the statistic. People don't want the explanation, but if you if you want a headline, the answer is that there are 17% of people in Wales who are confident enough to say that they are fluent on official documentation. That often makes people quite nervous. So there's a lot to be proud of there. It may seem ironic that I'm doing this in the medium of English, uh, but I am one who advocates that... Um, the second best thing after speaking in Welsh is speaking about Welsh. Um, I think that does us a lot of good as well. So uh, I don't mind doing this uh, in the language of our fine neighbours next door. So I did write a few words and I'd like to share them with you if possible. If you'll hear me, if you'll listen to me, many wouldn't. But I sort of... I asked myself, what do you mean I can't climb this tree? That's what the ambulance is for. What do you mean I can't play with fireworks? That's what the emergency services are for. What do you mean I can't drink all this beer, smoke all these cigarettes, and not expect doctors and nurses to help me when the proverbial hits the fan? That's what doctors and nurses are for. Why can't I jump across this giant hole in the ground? You know, there's people there to help me. Why should I read with my child? That's what schools are for. We're so, so easy, so, so quick to, to dismiss that as someone else's job. We don't often like to take up the mantle of learning something or doing something good because someone else will clear it up, you know? And the environment springs to mind. For me, in a way, the government's plan to have a million speakers by the middle of the next cent, well, the middle of this century, is a bit double edged in a way. It sounds progressive, sounds confident, um, but it can make people believe that the pressure's off them. The government will handle it, they'll do it. 
I don't need to do anything, it's fine. Um, put your feet up. But that's wrong. There's only so much that any government sitting in our parliament can achieve with regards to the Welsh language. Um, we have to succeed at a choice. Um, there's legwork to be done and it must be done. Um, there's no shirking around that fact. Responsibility. You could ask the billionaires who are buying English football teams at the moment and, and, and European football teams, you could ask them to say, I tell you what, why don't you fund this? But if they fail to inspire the people, if you fail to make people see the value of Welsh, um, it, it, it will fail. You can put all the money in the world into things. Now, I, I advocate spending money on the Welsh language. But I, I don't, I worry that that is something that gives people the opportunity to, to shirk away from responsibility. If we're not behind this, this old language will baseline on the operating table of conversation quicker than how fast the golden record on Voyager 1 and 2 continue into interstellar space. I'm aware this seems a bit pitiful, probably, to many people who might take the time to listen to me, but I had a little cry last night. I spent my life learning this language, falling in love with this language, meeting the people I have, having the experience I have, meeting my wife, bringing up my son in this language. It was just this, this open door for people to experience this new way of looking at the world. And it was wonderful. And it is wonderful. And that little cry happened around 10, 15 minutes after I scrolled through the paragraphs and the infographics of the 2021 census statistics for the state of the Welsh language. But I'm certain that those two aren't connected, right? We're going to have to shout a little bit louder about how wonderful it is to not only be bilingual, but to be bilingual in one of Europe's ancient tongues. One in which the people who forged this old land of ours discussed, deliberated, laughed, learned, explained their excitement and their fears, their hopes, dreams, their happiness and their sadness. That's all ours too. We're going to have to shout a bit louder that dismissing a language based on whether you believe it to be useful enough for employment purposes is pretty much exactly the same as dismissing a potential friend because they're not offering you a job. It's brave to say whether a language is useful or not. I don't like the argument very much because what one finds useful is not what others find useful. If you find useful to be something that is fiscally good, that gives you money and employment and opportunities like that, that's okay. If that is your definition, that is fine. For people like me, many, many others, I find value in connection, connecting to those people who forge this land, connecting to a language that my family spoke before it was lost. The connection of new people just because you can say the same words in a different language as them. The way you assess the world around you in different ways just because you're using different words to do it. It's beautiful. As Welsh speakers, where I can now proudly put myself for the last 10, 15 years, we're going to have to choose Welsh first and swap to English if we have to. As speakers, we're going to have to bring learners with us from teaching for
for nearly 12 years uh, to both adults and young people, um, to the nutters who follow me on Twitter. They are the keenest bunch of people you will ever meet. They love this. They want to be part of this with us. As speakers, we're going to have to defend this language from those who probably, without Welsh as a target, would probably aim at another minority. As learners, where I also include myself, as a former one anyway, and I'm still learning, we all are, I'm still learning English. I still make mistakes in English. We're going to have to start using what we can. We're going to have to show people this is alive. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Now we step up and we step out of that comfort zone. We have to forge those occasions, those opportunities to use our Welsh. If we don't find any around us, we have to make them. Be that inside your own mind, talking to yourself. It's pretty cool. I get more sense out of myself, really, than haha. Uh -huh. To Dioch in the shops. Now we tell other people that, yeah, learning Welsh is often, or the Welsh language itself is often a nightmarish nemesis. But it's always your friend. Always. There was no box for learners on the census last year. And therefore, there are no official statistics. But there are tens of thousands of people who are learning this language. There are thousands of people out there. I can think of at least, at least four right now people whose Welsh is amazing and who probably do their best to not speak any English to me, who said no on that census because they didn't feel like they were fluent. It's... Bilingualism is not a binary ultimatum. It's not a yes or no. Whether you like it or not, if you can count to 10 in Welsh, you're bilingual. You can do that in another language. There are so many of us. If the question asked was, do you speak Welsh? Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't do it that much. Maybe we should do it a bit more. That's the question we ask each other in the street. Do you speak Welsh? But I think if we all said, do you know Welsh? I think we might surprise ourselves. We need to shout this from the rooftops and shout it in Welsh. The revolution, it's finished. Now, more than ever in her history, Welsh needs a friend. It needs people to stand her corner and fight. It is time for us to take up that mantle and throw down the gauntlets and, and embrace what is a burden. Nobody asked for that burden. Whatever your connection is to Wales, whether it's come here on holiday, I've been to school here, I've lived here for a bit, I've got family there, I've heard of Wales. Now is the time where you could you could do with trying a little bit. It's not nice to hear. I need to step up a bit. And I think I'll leave with a little uh, what's the word? Anecdote in a way of which I was rather proud when I was thinking about it last night. The talking has to stop. And the sharad must begin. Quite proud of that. Be part of it. It's amazing. It's really cool. It's worth it. It is nothing short of life changing. And if you don't think you've got the time for it to change your life anymore, do what you can to let it change someone else's. Tell people there's a point to it. Tell people that you're a bit sad that you don't speak Welsh. That's okay. Tell that to people.
Let them know you're gutted that you're not fluent. And show them there are opportunities to be fluent, that other people can have that chance. I've always said that I do believe by the end of this century, Welsh will die. Unfortunately, I think I still stand by it. That doesn't mean it will die because people didn't try, I hope. It doesn't mean it will die because it wasn't useful. It is. I'd love someone to stand where I lie for eternity and say, you were wrong, mate. Or even better, Rodatina Anghoir, which is, you're wrong. I don't know. But don't stop being brilliant if you're learning it. And be nervous when you speak Welsh. Do it. You can do it. I just waffle a bit, really, don't I? Maybe there's something in there. Who knows? Come right, Gambith.